everyone. My name is Sanjeev Goyal, and with me today I have Umang Jain, CTO of Zovio. Zovio is an organization doing some phenomenal work in the educational space, which is very, very relevant today for all of us, that what is the future of education? This is a question we are asking everyone. Umang is an IIT Dali alum, and he's in the United States for more than a decade, and he has done some phenomenal work in healthcare space, as well as in education. Umang, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Sanjeev. How are you? I'm doing good. Awesome. Thanks for having me here. I'm glad. So, Umang, why don't you share with us what is your vision of education, especially post pandemic? Well, so I think uh, when I think about my vision for education, right, um, I, I think about, you know, how to make a system that works for, uh, you know, my family, my friends, and what would that look like? Uh, and if you talk again, I have a 14 year old son and he's about ready to go to college. And um, what they are experiencing is just a very different world than where we come from. The learning is different, how the pace is very different. And, uh, uh, you know, again, the speed at which different people learn is, again, um, uh, very interesting, right? Yeah, so, so that to me, I, so sorry, to me, when I, go ahead. Yeah, I, actually, that was the most important question I wanted to ask. So I'm going to, uh, this is the one question always bothering me. Uh, we haven't changed the way we learn and everything has changed around us in the last 20 years. And learning is still linear learning, and which is not true. You and me both know uh, we can learn exponentially if provided a right environment, we have the right system. And that is the most important question I want to ask today. So I'm so glad you got to that so quickly. Yeah, no, that's why, again, so when you talk about the vision, right? So that's why when I think about education, it is kind of driven by your life events and what's going on. Uh, and people in your life inspire you. And right, right now, when I think of education, it's like, what does my son want and how can I create something that works for him? And as you said, right, everything else around us has changed, but our experience around education has not really changed. Uh, and again, when I say that, it's, you know, um, uh, it's take it with a grain of salt because there is a lot of innovation happening in the space. Uh, online education, uh, a lot of opportunities that were not available to us growing up as kids is, is available, a lot of content, a lot of educational videos, um, you know, a lot of, uh, when you talk, think of Khan Academy and the work that they have done, it's just amazing, right? Uh, and the, a lot of the content is available for free. And uh, when you, again, if I take everything else out, you have Google, right? Yeah. Uh, you, how you learn, how you ask questions, how you validate that has changed. It's not like when we grew up where if you had a question, you had to go to a library or go to somebody who has experience. And that's the only viewpoint that shaped your, your thinking and your learning. In today's world, the world is accessible. Social media is accessible. Uh, what people see on TikTok becomes, you know, sometimes their thought process. So it's, it's a very different world that we are living in. Um, and we need to change education to be in pace with that, which basically means you want to understand how people are learning, what they have already learned, uh, and how to take it to the next level and make it personalized for them instead of you know jamming 50 people, 100 people in a class and making all of them go through the same thing. So um, personalization is the key. That's what I'm hearing from you. Personalization is the key and to get to the personalization, you need to understand where people are, what do they know and how does that, and how do you, what's the next level of uh, education or learning you want to create for them is I think the way for the future because people learn through their experiences. Now, if I, you know, just taking my son's example, he's already doing stock trading uh, and learns a lot more about companies and how to analyze them and stuff like that. He's read books about them. Uh, he started a blog about, you know, how to invest in this journey for investing. Now, if I give him a basic course in finance 101, he's, he probably already knows 50 to 60% of the concept and would be really bored if, you know, if he has to spend half of his semester going through that. So how do you understand where people are and take it further for them is, is very important, you know, it's, and makes education efficient. Um, so that's where, so when I think of education, to me, that's 
kind of the key to success and and the holy grail to success so what i'm hearing is uh two words are resonating uh and i'm sure it resonates with our audience too is personalization and experiential learning but when we talk about it it sounds pretty amazing really great how do you do implementation of that because uh we are still so used to of learning and uh this learning if we look at it is i would say less than 100 years old that way the structure we have prior to that it was more uh, based on individual and personalized if we look at the even the old movies and we go back to even old indian scriptures in gurukul systems everybody was studying at a different pace and the teacher has so much uh, understanding of each kid it's different uh now today it's not possible because of the population and the things we have do you see uh, artificial intelligence or the newer technologies we have can help us create that uh, i say blueprint for that or a fabric for that well well i think um so the way i would like to answer that is uh, i i think this basically we need to change how we think of education if you have to go there i don't think it's a technology challenge uh, frankly we have enough technology to figure out uh, uh, you know a lot of the things it's just how we think about it uh, and how are we understanding where people are and what are the next steps in their journey right and again also in all of these things right what is the motivation for learning so i come from a healthcare background and um, and i am only about a year and a half in the uh, higher ed space and uh, ed tech services space but in healthcare we were always thinking of how do you keep people healthy right that was the holy grail and and out of the hospital system and out of the system so that the costs are less and you know do those things uh and a lot of that boils down to your motivation right you would think that why are people not walking why are they not eating healthy how do you motivate them to take care of the basic things about themselves and that was the key to success i similarly i think in education why are people trying to do what they're trying to do what is the motivation behind and how can you motivate and support a understand the motivation and then support them through that process and journey is the key to success so again i always joke around in healthcare we're trying to keep people out of the system in education we're trying to keep people in the system uh learning and growing so um and in both cases it's hard because it's not natural for us as humans to to do some of the things that we've been asked to do uh whether it's learning or whether it's keeping healthy um so that's so understanding the motivation is the to do success um uh, in getting to that personalized uh impact that you want to have for people um it, it i don't think it's a technology challenge and again yes you can use ai ml to continuously learn through that process uh, and yes we have a lot of technology and data that will help us figure out what is the next level in learning and get predictive on that front um but we need to think think of education in a very different way uh, again in at zovio we think of it as you know what's the what's the skills to employment with employment being the major motivation for most of the factor uh, most of the people as they go forward and um, and that's how we are thinking of what are the courses that are relevant how do we personalize those courses for people where they are meet people where they are and uh, you know and be part of their uh, lifestyle if you will in in learning and growing i mean um, you guys done phenomenal work in so many years uh, you are pretty new to zovio in terms of the times of you is around uh, and uh, you have made a huge impact i saw how you are able to change the thing so let's talk 10 years from now and uh, there is no limitation uh from uh, at that time you have all the access you have all the controls to make changes in the education system uh, what will that look like to you what will that look like to me um, well again so goes back to the motivation right to me it's education is an available to people at will uh it doesn't cost uh, uh an arm and a leg to get educated and get the degrees that you want uh most likely people are even not thinking of degrees in the same traditional way that we have been thinking of degrees because uh, a lot of the basic education and the basic knowledge is available you can just google through it and 
you know, be decently good at it is how are you connecting those dots? How are you applying those things? How are you building on top of that becomes important in for, I would say, most of the people uh, in their daily lives. And you want to be able to provide that to them at a very, in a very easy way, which also means as part of our employment and trying to understand who is the right person to employ, do they have the right skills? We have a much better process than, uh, a mu or a much better ability to understand and estimate people's skill uh, instead of just looking at the degree that they have, right? Oh, that's that's uh, very exciting. That's very interesting. So, you know, I look at the future and uh, maybe I'm a dreamer. I believe in 10 years from now, uh, the importance of having a degree will diminish importance of uh, what you know, what you can do. Uh, because I personally feel today we have a lot of journalists. People know too much about too many things, kind of, but they don't have a deeper level of understanding of these things. Uh, to the extent that I can push that envelope a little bit further is uh, we, are, we already started uh, outsourcing the job of thinking to computers. That's a fact, uh, whether we like it or not, but it's happening. We don't want to think, like right? we want our phone to even decide what time to wake up. We want our Nest alarm to uh, Nest uh, device to figure out what time to have what temperature. It, it's just beyond our imagination, the kind of comforts we are getting with these smaller things, but it is changing our world dramatically. So what is next for us? So I'm really looking at is as a human, 10 years from now, we have to think of different things, new frontiers. And what are those? That is a key challenge. And if we can predict those new frontiers, the education system has to evolve very quickly. So we are ready and we have people who are trained to take care of those challenges. For example, space is still completely a new frontier for us. Our ocean is still, you know, very little export. We know so little about our earth even today. And uh, we are talking about Mars. So there are a lot of opportunities around there. Other opportunities I clearly see is around uh, zero carbon footprint because we are, our carbon footprint is increasing. Our food is adding more and more. So it's a huge challenge. And I'm not seeing any institution is doing work in that direction. So the challenge I have for you and the question I have for you is, uh, as the person who is at the helm of uh, Zovio, which is a very large organization, you have impact on hundreds of thousands of people in terms of the total impact, what you see and the areas you see, the growth areas in the education? Uh, I, again, I, as you, so first of all, I totally agree. There's a lot of basic challenges that we also need to, so again, you're talking about going to Mars and all, I think we have a lot of basic challenges that we have still not solved for. Uh, world hunger is not solved for, it's not, and again, it's, I don't think it's not solved for because we don't lack resources. It's just, you know, how do we, as a, hu as a human society, think of uh, the basic uh, threshold of living and treating humans and uh, taking care of them and, uh, you know, serving or crossing our boundaries of countries, religion, race, uh, to get there, right, is what's preventing us from doing that. Um, so, I, again, I think that's, um, that's the challenge we all need to be thinking of. Uh, same in the healthcare space, right? It's like, how do you provide basic uh, basic healthcare capabilities uh, across the board? A lot of challenges on that front. Um, talking about living on Mars, actually, two days back, I was thinking, I thought I was living in Mars with all the orange skies in the Bay Area. So, yeah. uh, so, maybe, so maybe that's going to be the new norm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hope not. Oh, but, but that is, again, that's the reality, right? We are talking about the... Uh, when you talk about um, Earth and you know where we are and the cli the climate change, that's those are real problems for us. And uh, what we have to do to survive is going to need a lot more innovation. And to me, innovation comes not by, by again it, it, it I, I think it innovation happens at the cusp of you know two realms meeting together. So it's how do you connect the dots across two new things and two new learnings is when you get innovation, right? It's, uh, that's, I would say the primary driver of innovation. You, the human brain thinks differently 
uh, when it's exposed to different experiences and you bring that thing together and you can think of creating something new. And to me, that's the challenge in education is how do you give people these very varied experiences uh, without making it too onerous and, uh, and start driving the innovation that is needed to solve real, real world problems. And especially in today's context, when you can't even bring them to school. So, because uh, if I remember my days of IIT, and I'm sure you must be the same, is uh, 90 to 95% of my learning was with my friends. We used to sit together and solve a problem because we couldn't solve any problem by ourselves. It was so complex. I remember my days like uh, once uh, three of us sat down whole night and we could solve only six questions from an assignment. It, it just, and it was so phenomenal. I mean, that experience, I always remember whenever I'm in a tough spot, I say, you know what, just bring some people in and then we'll figure it out even if they are not an expert. And we find the different viewpoint really help us solve those problems. So when do you see this is going to happen in the education space where we start at least doing this collaboration uh, remotely because now it is all remote. There is no classroom. Well, well, again, if you look at what we have been doing in the online education space, um, you have the technology available to do the collaboration. Um, and we are bringing that to the forefront uh, at Sofio and also trying to figure out how to get that across other universities and university partners. So, so that's, I, I think it's happening. Uh, it's, I think with the pandemic and with COVID, it is going to change how we collaborate. Again, you can just take the, the conference that you're having here, right? The IIT Pan Global Conference because now your physical barriers are removed and you're going virtual, you can dream much bigger, yeah. right? Your boundaries are going to, uh, to go away. It's, uh, and I think COVID is going to, uh, and COVID has actually changed how we collaborate, how we do not think of our physical barriers to bring pe pe people of various interests together and make it easier for people to collaborate. Um, people are finding, are getting innovative and are, are finding new ways to collaborate even, yeah, even when they're not physically together. And I think that is actually leading to a lot more uh, varied viewpoints coming together instead of the, all the physical barriers we used to have, right? Um, so as simple as going to conferences, right? Was, it was a big barrier. Now it's much easier to attend a conference and get a much more global presence um, uh, and thoughts together. What I face and see in California is not what people in Delhi face or what people in South Africa face or people in Namibia, right? So um, there's a lot of um, learning that people can have just because of what other experiences are and, and share those experiences. And I think that's sharing is going to be one of the biggest uh, ways in which education is going to to change going forward. So what I'm hearing from you is uh, one is uh, there is uh, this collaboration, the system already exists. We have to figure out a way, how do we build it in, or how do we deploy it in such a way that more people can collaborate, more people can get engaged. So the learning become more exponential instead of linear learning. Uh, we have to look and think, for area, think about the areas where the world is heading, the kind of challenges we are going to have in future, and then come up with those education systems to curriculum to other programs. Uh, one big thing I uh, just heard from you is, it seems like there is a silver lining somewhere. It's not like, uh, oh, there is no opportunity in a way where we are today as a, con as a country or as a globally, the global economy is, uh, it's a time. If we all join our hands together, we will be able to create new and different kind of blueprint for the future of education and future of humanity. Am I correct? Um, I think so. I think, uh, you know, you, we as humans uh, come up with the, our most innovative solutions and collaborations uh, when it goes, goes tough, right? Uh, as I say, uh, necessity is a mother of invention. Uh, we are, you know, COVID has created a lot of necessities and is also creating a lot of uh, uh, innovation and in invention in the in in the ecosystem. So I think it's a it's a 
we are going to deal with it and we are going to come out stronger as a human race out of this uh, this situation. Uh, I, again, uh, coming from healthcare, right? I was here in healthcare, we were trying to deploy uh, telehealth options, technology existed, but there were a lot of rules and regulations uh, that prevented uh, the widespread use of telehealth. And well, after like four or five years of fighting with COVID within a couple of weeks, all the rules were changed and regulations changed and you know, telehealth is off to a right start. And similarly here, um, online education, um, taking the physical barriers out for people uh, in, term, uh, in terms of collaborating and educating, people are beginning to use the technology because necessity is the mother of invention and um, makes change much easier for, for us humans. Awesome. So Umang, uh, you know, that's almost to the end of our segment, but uh, I want to ask you questions is, can you tell us a little bit about you to our audience so they know uh, from where you come and how you got here and how you become the CTO of uh, one of the largest uh, e-learning uh, and uh, not just e-learning, it's, it's, I will call it more of an intuitive learning platform because you are really bringing the best of the best technologically breed solution and creating a collaborative education environment where you are even helping them figure out what they should or shouldn't be even doing or learning. How, did, how was the journey and how you got here? Oh, I don't know where to start, I guess. Uh, it, it, again, I come from a very um, small family back in uh, India from Faridabad. Uh, and for, for people, you know, globally located, it's a uh, suburb of Delhi. Uh, and um, yeah, I happen to get, I still believe I happened to get into IIT. That was actually the only uh, entrance exam I passed. I did not pass a lot of other uh, entrance exams, um, you know, be it luck or whatever it is. And part of the reason was because I had given my SATs and was planning to come to the US. Um, my visa was denied uh, because of whatever reasons they did not find the paperwork right or or whatever so uh, so I ended up at IIT um, and hindsight that was one of the best things that ever happened to me uh, would not trade it for any other experience uh, frankly some of the best friendships the learning uh, and just probably the best you know uh, time in my uh, in my life um, I in fact I did my engineering I, I'm a textile major um, and one of the things I learned there is how to bring various uh, engineering disciplines together with, you know, uh, polymer sciences or, uh, man, you know, man mechanical engineering or computer sciences and how to use that to, to think of something new. And uh, that is something that has been with me throughout my journey. Um, and, uh, you know, joined uh, Infosys, uh, I would say about a few months after I was at Reliance. Um, and um, because I did not see myself doing textile engineering for life and did not like the work that was there, uh, decided to make the change, went into software, got worked with Infosys for a couple of years, um, and then decided to come to US, uh, was with Deloitte for some time. Um, and it was just an amazing period. Um, and part of the things that that I have always um, all, that I've always done is, you know, continue to learn and grow, you know, find new challenges, continue to grow and keep, uh, keep learning and growing. And that's how I guess I landed up here. In fact, you know, um, I landed up, I changed from healthcare to education because I thought I'd spent too much time in healthcare and wanted to change and wanted to learn something new, a new, new space. And also see, saw myself making a difference in terms of uh, bringing, technology experiences to bear to a new business problem. Uh, and it's been exciting right here at Zovio uh, with all the exciting things that we are working on. So, so yeah, that's been the journey, I guess. And um, there are no shortcuts to success. Uh, there were no shortcuts to this success. It's, a, it's been a lot of hard work and uh, taking risks and being open to learning and growing um, you know, as you go forward. So, so fantastic. That's amazing, Umang. That's phenomenal. And you know, it's, uh, it's so you've, uh, see, I talked to several uh, 
uh, people in last few weeks and uh, really the people who are the change maker in my opinion, you are one of those. And one word uh, resonate with every single person, is challenges. And it seems like it's a pattern that every single IITN thrives when they see a challenge. When they see things, everything is going fine, they are not really excited. So challenges excites us. So question for you is, do you have a challenge for our audience? Um, I think uh, the challenge for the audience is uh, we have to think of all the opportunities that we are living in. Again, I think we'll all be talking about 2020 as the year of change, uh, a year of the pandemic and, you know, wildfires and, you know, again, the list goes on and on. Um, but this is to me also a year of Bring challenge and opportunity. Yeah, just like we have a, we have a t-shirt here as well, which says hashtag bring it and to me this has been a hashtag bring it year and uh, we all will rise to the challenge T to me the challenge for the audience is think of uh, how you want to change the world you know there's opportunities everywhere whether it's you know education whether it's healthcare uh, whether it's uh, you know world hunger for you know as as simple as that um, and um, apply yourself and figure out how you're going to change the world. It's, it's in our hands, right? What we change and how we change. No, that's really, really wonderful. I mean, I really enjoyed our conversation. Uh, thank you very, very much, Umang, for your time. It was really amazing. Any last message for our audience? Uh, no, have fun at the I, at the Pan IIT Global Conference. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing all the great uh, uh, speakers that Sanjeev and team have lined up. And uh, you know, that's this is how you learn and grow. It's uh, we all have stories to share. Share us, share your stories. Spread the education and spread the information. Yeah. Once again, thank you very much for your time. It was so fun talking to you.